much. Think that thing will break off in the ground as hard as it is? It did fine yesterday and we were in some pretty hard ground yesterday. So that is people doing our soil testing. So I don't know if you guys remember back in wheat harvest, we did a little demo of an integrated ag soil testing. Uh, basically they came out, that is a so mounted soil testing machine. Basically I think I think it takes 300 samples without stopping. Uh, but they do very close soil tests. That's what they specialize in. This summer they came out and they did, um, what was it? Third acre grids of soil testing. So if you're not a farmer, Basically a soil test is how you know what is in your dirt. They come in, they do a soil test, they take a sample of dirt and they analyze that dirt and they tell you what nutrients you have, what you're lacking, and then that's how you can kind of build your soil because you know what to apply to it. By doing it in grids, you're kind of taking an average. Like if we take a point here and here and here and here in a grid, uh, typically they're like two and a half acres. Well, there's a lot of space in between there. With doing it tighter, you know, you get a little bit more accurate readings, be a little bit more precise. We're having them do half acre soil testing on the whole farm. So that is not a sponsor thing. That is a 100% reverse sponsorship and we're paying for it. Oh yeah, morning. So we changed plans, we're running corn again. That means we gotta switch this thing back over. So this pulley we have to change when we go from corn to beans, this is the corn pulley. Uh, basically this controls the speed of the chopper. You can also move the chopper knives, adjust a couple things in the feeder house, and switch rotor gears. Overall, especially with two people, you can do it in about five minutes or so. By yourself, eh, 10 to 15. Take this truck into town. And then when we get back, we're gonna run that uh, 80 acres of corn, 70 acres of corn. So that wasn't the original plan, but uh, the more we got thinking about it, we might as well do it while we're here. Kind of wish we'd have done that before we changed crops yesterday, but oh well. Lost the end of my hammer yesterday. So now we just got a club. Hmm. So here we get in lines four, five, or six. Best practice is to pick the shortest one. Looks like the short one is uh, the middle lane. Lane five. Uh, just follow the truck in front of you. Go when your light changes. That's really all you can do. So here at Cargill, they're loading a train. Almost all grain leaves here on rail. And the way this one's set up, when they're loading the train, it slows us down tremendously. I believe they have to use one of their legs to load out over there, which is not fun. Now one thing that will be nice for us, almost all these trucks are running beans. We're switching to corn and coming in here, so we probably won't have to wait on the other side of the scales very often. We'll probably get to go past all these trucks and then wait in this line over here. Only good news about it is, I'm going to knock out a bunch of editing today. Because I'm going to be waiting in here for about 30 minutes a truck probably. I'm not going to lie, I'm going to be pretty lazy right now. I only have grain in the front hopper. I'm not even getting out. Yeah, we're gonna get out and check. But I could just sit here. Looks like Dad and BJ have already started, which is good news. BJ is gonna give me a ride up to my pickup though when they get back around here. Just getting this field opened up. It's uh, a little after 11. There's 70 acres here. We can run 70 acres fairly easily in one day, especially. You know, this not being like 300 bushel corn, I'd say this. This is probably 200 plus, but um, the biggest holdup is going to be Cargill. If Cargill can get us in and out of there, we will get done today, but that could be the limiting factor. Basically 70 acres at 200 bushels, that'd be 14 trucks that we'll have to get dumped. We really need 10 because we can hold four uh, between the three semis and the grain cart. So if we can get 10, tu tr 10 trucks dumped, that's me and Jeff each taking five loads. That might be a tall order, but hopefully... They're open until 7. Hopefully we can make that happen. Field is, this field's right along the side of the river. It's right there. 
Apparently we've got a beaver. Beaver issue. Yeah, there it is. Right there, there's the beaver hut. Destructive little animals. Taxi service. Everybody else take notes. Wes came with food. You know how to get our attention. <laughs> Never seen Farmer's Edge do this, did you? Four years and thousands of dollars, not even one meal. It's gonna slam on one camera like that, man. So this is like seeding recommendations and perk for wheat then? Yeah. Okay. So that was Wes from Integrated Ag. He is, I guess, our consultant or advisor or whatever. I don't know what Wes's actual title would be, but basically he's the guy that's going to go over our soil test with us, help us write recs, collect data. Pretty excited to see if we can, you know, really increase our yields, especially in soybeans. We, we raise okay soybeans, but I feel like we raise really good corn and I'd like to get that number up. I'm hoping those guys can help us do that. Just took off with the first load. I'm going to move this semi over here now that the field's a little bit more opened up. Uh, I would say I'll be heading in town very shortly. Uh, this corn's pretty good, and right here we have some really long rounds. So Those are very efficient. Now, if we get in a pinch, there's point rows over there. Point rows are basically where if a field's not perfectly square and they start tapering down, you have shorter rows that come out in angles. Those just take longer because they're not super efficient. It just is what it is. You're not going to not farm them because they're inefficient, but... If we get in a pinch and get behind, dad might move over to those. That way he can keep rolling while we're uh, dumping trucks. I think these things get a bad rap in the farming community. I can drive anything with wheels or tracks and I could probably figure out a boat in a few minutes. But I like them things, a couple reasons. One, when you're going a long haul, they're just super convenient. And when, by long haul, I mean like longer than 20 minutes, I don't know. I guess I've never really went on a long haul. But another reason, Truck, farmers can never find truck drivers and it's a seasonal job it's just hard to find if you got automatics i mean jeff had never driven a semi other than around a test track at work so he worked for a kenworth uh, manufacturing plant well he's driven like probably 25 semi loads to town now so yeah i kind of like him now don't get me wrong i don't mind that either it's fun going through gears but it's kind of like a sports car it's fun going through gears but at the end of the day, an automatic is a little bit more convenient sometimes. There's the Ohio flying farmer. Hot dog, nobody's here. Now a lot of times, especially during bean, like when people are running beans, it'll clear out for a little while because everyone's hauled in at what they've harvested the night before and they're still waiting on it to dry off so they can harvest again. I would say this load, like Jeff's dumping right now, that's great, that's fantastic. I'd say by the next load though, or maybe the one after that, we'll be waiting in line again. Well, we're shelling corn again. Got the beans done over there. Down in the bottom, shelling corn. Some of it's uh, 15, some of it's 22, or closer to the river. Wetter it gets, low spots. Some places, you know, 125, you grab dry places, other places, 225. Better. You ain't real fast, it over. Stops, don't feed it in. It's good corn. I think this is a different variety. Might be just damn wetter. 250, 245, 18% moisture. Uh, about 
full, ain't gonna make it through and there's wood. So we get this round up there, get the clear out, clean out, then we'll break through the metal that way we can, uh, well, after we break through, we can work both, <coughs> unload both ways. Yes, for full. The uh, good news is, they haven't stopped, they're still rolling. So they're not waiting on us. Still have two empty trucks. But they're just getting fully opened up now, so now they're in the big rows. Basically each down and back will be a truckload. I'm sure BJ down there is going to have a truckload when he gets back here. So I'm sure Dad's pointed out what this field's making, but I think he told me it was making mid twos, so like 220 to 240. Now there's some bad pieces in this field, but overall this is a pretty good piece of dirt. So walking out here and kind of looking at how dad's doing, we're losing some corn. I told him he's going to adjust some stuff, but there's more corn on the ground than I want to see, I tell you that. Now the gleaner I don't think will ever do as good as our cloths, but it is capable of doing way better than that. Uh, I mean, I've seen it run 300 bushel corn and do better than that, so yeah, I'm going to have to change something up. So cue the silver cedar comments, I'm sure they're coming. Show me a combine that realistically never loses corn. And I'll probably call you a liar. I think the cloth is as good as any, but it'll still lose some corn. Not much, but it will lose some. Especially when you're in certain uh, varying conditions. I mean, let's say you go from a low spot with 25% uh, corn, you get into a dry spot with 15% corn. Settings need to change, and if, especially if you don't have an automated combine, uh, you're gonna lose a little bit of corn there. But hopefully he makes some changes, and uh, I like think it'll do better. Tell me what corn comes if we don't move though. Yep, I'll take that one. I like pears though, so two would work. Hey Jeff, I'll always get out of your way if you're loaded. The loaded truck has the right of way. Alrighty. Well, this fella had uh, had trouble feeding in. All her slips won't feed in, dry, can't run real fast. It ain't worth a on a in that corner and combine. Works fine on the Lexion, but it ain't worth a on a leader. I guess I'm gonna have to just take time and cut the throat out and fix it himself. Seems like uh, Chapella doesn't want to do anything. Just the way it is, I guess. So. Like I say, it works fine on Lexion, but on this cleaner, it just don't, uh, there's not enough room to get that corn in the throat. The dryer gets, the worse it gets, all that fodder cup in, I got the strip of bacon, opened up some, a good bit, more than once. So right over four mile an hour, she plugs up. It was good corn, 220, 240 right through here. Yeah, the center's starting to plug up. Got a shield there, right down there. I don't know if you can see it, but probably can't. But the, uh, I thought we'd take that off, but I'd take care of the problem. That didn't work. Boy, it just threw that corn out. There, yeah, finally goes. Well, this is probably the last load of the day. Good news is, though, they only have eight acres left of that field. We'll be done a little earlier than I thought. Now, I've said it the last two nights and not made it home till about 10, so maybe we're jinxing ourselves. I don't know. Imposters. There's like five brown farms in Ross County, but I've never seen that one. Well, it's time of evening. What is it? About uh, 5 o'clock, something like that. Anyway, sun gets down, lower, it's hard to see. Glare on the dirt on the windshield, it shows. Not sure what dad is doing over there, but I see him crawling on top of the feeder house. Wonder if something's broke on that corn head. Keep having issues plugging that thing. I don't know if that's what's going on or what. 
you guys probably can't see what it is I'm exactly trying to focus on there but not real sure what's going on yet looks like they're done Leaner's starting to look like one of the black versions. Very, very black now. So that happens sometimes as corn harvest progresses. You just, you know, it's not turn black from all the dust. And sometimes it'll be from some of the pieces on the corn. BJ just said the field made 214 wet. So probably about, I don't know, 205 dry bushels. Not terrible, I thought it would do better than that though. Everybody, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. If you would do me a favor, thumbs up the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and we'll see you in the next one.